Mike, thank you so much for the time. How are you doing today? Oh, uh, I'm doing great. <laughs> Thanks. What's, what are you laughing He's at? He's giggling. What are you giggling at, Mike? No, I just, I, the whoa, whoa, whoa was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of woes there. That was a, that was a record was number a of woes. Of <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. You were talking so fast, I got to slow down. Oh, uh, oh, welcome to my world, Mike Martz. That's right, my partner. Right. Imagine how I feel. All right. Oh, God. I'll, I'll, I'll slow down. Dude, you're I'll be very delivered. Yeah, thanks. You're going to a mile a second there, man. Yeah, all right. I'll slow, <laughs> slow down. You froze him. You froze him real good. But I'm just gonna. I'm, I'm, I stopped him. I didn't even have to say whoa. I'm just gonna pause. <laughs> How does Mike Martz feel uh, about Justin Fields now? Oh God, he's he's just so impressive. He's just special in every way. And that what they did, uh, you know, they were trying to force a force him in that pocket to be the traditional NFL quarterback and like we all do, I think. And you know, they were smart enough as a staff and as a head coach, um, you know, after that Thursday night game to go back and change it. And they, you know, look, here's what he does well. Uh we're trying to make him do something he's not ready for. Let's let's let him uh, let's get him out of the pocket on the move, let him throw it and on third downs, if you let him run and then get some quarterback runs, and the more he did it, the better he got. And his confidence is sky high, and right now he's so electric. He's just so much fun to watch play, and he just turned him loose. He's energized. This is, his, this is kind of who he is. He's kind of, in some respects, it's, it's expanding the lead to be inclusive of a different kind of quarterback, which is what he is. And aside from that, you know, they've limited the, the number of attempts in the pocket, and, and by the way, in the last game or two, when he was in the pocket, I think with his confidence up and, and whatnot, he's actually better in the pocket and quicker with the ball than he was. And I just, you got to credit the coaching staff and Matt for that and to play into this guy's strength and, and feed that and just the energy of the team and it's affected everybody around him. It's really thrilling to see happen. That's really cool um, to hear you say that and see that, uh, Mike, because that's what it feels like from our perspective. You mentioned the moving yeah. pocket. Um, tell us, as a longtime offensive coordinator and a guy who knows, what is the effect of how much they're doing that? Because they're doing it a lot, whether it's a full rollout or just like a little like three-yard shuffle yeah, with the moving yeah, pocket. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, what's the effect of that for Justin? Okay, so. So here's what they did, and this is really smart. I mean, this is why they call you a coach, and he, I, I can't say enough about how smart they are with what they're doing. It really, it's, it might be the best job of coaching this year. What they've done is they they looked at what he doesn't do well, and they kind of bring it along. So in other words, he's not a real quick in the pocket. Things happen so fast, you got to see Rack get it out. So, and he's just not ready for that. Now maybe he can, maybe he can. I don't know, but. What they've done is they've let him buy time so that he can see things. And the longer he can hang on to that ball and be on the move, the more comfortable he is and the better throws he makes. And you know, they've kind of fed that animal in some respects, and it's been really paid off. And, you know, I think uh, I'm excited for him because in the last game or two, watching him in the pocket, he was remarkably better. And it's affected that part of it. So he's getting used to the speed of the game as a passer. And for him, that's what it's all about. That It's not that he can't throw the ball. It's that he's, you know, things happen so fast that he just misses. He just, he's not confident. He's just confused with it, you know, which is pretty normal for guys who've not been in that. The speed of the game is just so different. It's such a big adjustment. So um, it's, it's going to be exciting to see where he goes. He's a kind of a hybrid and I think it's really great for the league. It's it's great for that football team, and they've done a remarkable job with it. Are you surprised? I am. Yeah, I really am. Because I, you know, just like last year with that staff, the head coach, he just kept trying to fit that square peg in a round hole. It wasn't going, wasn't going. And now this staff, I just I can't say enough about what they've done with them. It was a concerted. They sat down and say, "Hey, this ain't working." And but we know he's a good player. You know, they see him every day. They know more about him than I than I certainly do, right? Just from watching him play on Sunday. So let's take what we know he can really do well, let's emphasize it and let's bring along the things that he's not doing very well. We'll work on that on the side. And in the end it's really paid off because he's growing with every week leaps and bounds. It's pretty exciting to see. It's so interesting. We're talking to Mike Martz. The top text that we have to the show is 
uh, laughing my ass off. Is this the same Martz? <laughs> uh, it, it, it's interesting, Mike, because like in that clip that we played when you came in with all the woes, uh, you know, you talked about like Lamar Jackson as a passer, but like I would say that he's not a finished product. As right, Lamar's never had a four thousand yard season. No, um, no. Here's the deal. I, I, you know, he may be. I don't know because outside the pocket, he's he's certainly at least as well as good as as uh, Lamar. The big deal is can you kind of matriculate him back into the pocket over time and get him more and more comfortable with it. Here's the thing I get excited about him is he's a big dude that has real serious speed, which I didn't know. And the other thing he is, he's very, very elusive. So here's he's he's Josh Allen with more elusiveness, you know what I mean? And better speed, by the way. And that's I didn't know any of that. And whoa, now, whoa, now whoa, 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 Mike. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I mentioned Josh Allen to you last like, time and you whoa, 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 me. And now you're saying it's Josh Allen. I'm gonna whoa, 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 you. <laughs> it's a battle of woes. Josh Allen, the one thing Josh Allen could do from the very get go, and now his decisions weren't very good, but he could put the ball wherever he wanted in the pocket, and he got it out pretty quick. He just was a bad decision guy, and over time, he's in this last game that he had too. He kind of went backwards a little bit in that respect, but I think that's why I was I was getting at Josh Allen in the pocket is good from the get go. I mean, he he could put the ball where he wanted. He just where he put it sometimes wasn't very smart. You know, that was his knock, but. What I saw from the difference is, you know, with Fields is in the pocket, there, there's a panic to him, you know, because things are just going so fast. And, you know, they're, you know, the, the team around him on offense, you know, is probably, you know, you know this is I'm not saying anything that you guys don't realize, probably mediocre. You know, as they get better around him, it's going to really affect him as well. And it's pretty exciting because that's the centerpiece. And if he can continue to grow, and not get injured, right, then they've got something to build on. Well, see, this is the thing, Mike Martz. It's so interesting because Josh Allen is, um, by your assessment, and I think it makes sense, a passer who can also run and now is the full package right. with some yes, designed right. runs, right? 50, 53% right, exactly. completion percentage his first year, 59% his, his second year. Okay. For the record. Yeah. But but right. a, but a passer first who then they 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 they've incorporated some some uh, some of the runs. Justin right now, we might look at as more of a runner and now they'll have to get him better as a passer. It's possible to get to that that finished product that you want who does everything from the runner's perspective, right? So so if you're starting where they're starting with with Justin. So so how do you get him better, quicker, more comfortable and aggressive in the pocket because he obviously will need that. There's going to be some times yeah. where he's just going to have to drop back and throw it 35 times and throw for 350. We haven't seen that yet. I don't know when he's going to need it, but he'll need it at some point. How do you get him there? So they they get in there by what they're doing. They throw. They let him get out on the perimeter where he's got time to see things and make good throws. You know where he's not rushed for the timing. The speed of the game is just different when you're outside the pocket. You know, he, he's athletic enough that he can separate from pursuers and he can get, you know, get his eyes down the field and make good throws. That's where he's at. And then as he gets back into the pocket, the speed of the game, now that he's comfortable and he sees things a little bit better, that'll come. Now, how good can he be in the pocket? I really don't know. But I know this, he's going to be better, much better than he was early, just because he's throwing the ball. You know what I mean? So he's successfully making good throws outside the pocket and hopefully that's going to relate to the pocket eventually. I think it it will. Now, how good? I don't know. But he's got a – the one thing I wouldn't compare him to anybody as a runner because he's truly different. Would um would some of this moving pocket stuff have been helpful for Jay Cutler, you think, Mike? No, I think Jay is – Jay's good in the pocket. He just is, was stubborn. He just – he had an idea where he wanted to go with it, and he was – he would wait because he had such a big arm, and, and that's a danger with guys with these big arms is they feel like they can kind of wait and then gun it in there, and that's eventually we broke him of that. Is in his second year with me there before he got injured, I think we were seven and three. We were probably the best team in the NFC when he got hurt, and he and Matt both got hurt at about the same time. And of course, we lost uh, the receiver too, so we lost three big guys immediately, and that was we just never recovered from that. But he was. He had finally bought in, and a veteran like that who's got success throwing it and doing it his way, it's hard 
to make that change. And then I changed too that second year, guys. What I told him is we're going to take a half of what we do and throw it out. And we did. And we're going to tailor things towards you. And it took me a full year to realize that these guys at the Bears this year <laughs> took up a few games to realize. So they have lots more than I was. Mike, this has been very enjoyable. I've enjoyed our battle of woes, and uh, let's let, let's do it again. Let's do it again towards the end of the season. All right? Whoa! 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 I just want to get in on. It. Yeah, yeah, you know, you can yeah, you can whoa yeah. him next time. Uh, all right, yeah. Well, you know. yeah. Thank you, Mike. All right, man. Hey, thank you. Bye. Thank hey. you. That's hey, Mike Martz. Props to him for having an open mind and seeing what he sees and realizing the adjustments that are that are being made. He comped him to Josh Allen, which is what which exactly is what I did last time. That <laughs> <laughs> is amazing. That is, is amazing. an amazing moment. Yeah, that is an amazing moment. Uh, <laughs> it is. What I'm going to take from that, though, also I'm glowing. is like it, it's not every coaching staff that does this. What they did, and there's a lot of people out there saying, "Man, coaches, this is what you're supposed to do." Why didn't they do it? The Cowley said that yesterday to us, right? Why didn't they do it in the preseason? They did it now. They watched. They learned. They did it. Yeah. Praise it. Understand. It's rare.